Today is another Clean With Me video. We're taking care of some areas that have gotten quite cluttered over time and bringing them back to at least a normal and presentable space. You'll notice an outfit change partway through the video and that is because these random cleaning tasks were done over a couple of days. While I wish I always had whole dedicated days to clean, that's just not reality a majority of the time, especially when you have young children to tend to. Most of the time, I just get done as much as I can in a few hours till my kids get home just in time to start destroying everything again. Today, we'll start with decluttering and cleaning the dining room slash Amazon and online shopping storage area at the front of my house. This area has become somewhat of a catch-all mess for things that are trash or pending for us in some way. Clearly, my husband and I do too much online shopping, so we have a ton of packaging sitting around from that. Also, I noticed he bought this computer chair, which I need actually in my office. I don't know if it was meant for me, but I'm taking it. Then the dining room table gets cluttered with stuff we need to return, stuff we have slated to give to people we know and we just haven't met up with them yet or dropped it off yet. Then there's just a lot of miscellaneous stuff as well that belongs in other parts of the house. So right now as I am taking stuff off the table, I'm putting it either where it belongs. Some stuff is my husband's and I'm not sure what he wants to do with it. Those items are going in that little fabric basket. Ultimately, I'm realizing that this table is just where things go when we're too lazy to put them away right away. So I'm just putting it all away. Now I'm going to wipe down this table with my Pledge wood cleaner and a microfiber cloth, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of fall decor to it. I don't do a ton of decor around my house. I feel like it's just more to buy, more to maintain. It's not something I put a ton of money into, but I do like to add just a little splash here and there to symbolize whatever season it is. These candles are Ray Dunn from last year at TJ Maxx, and then I have a little $5 ceramic pumpkin from this year's Target fall collection. This room actually looks like a dining room again, a much nicer way to greet people into our house, but just, just gotta be honest here, my husband's stuff is just shoved behind the table, out of sight, he'll have to go through that later. A lot of the clutter that was on the table are items that I need to give to other people. So just to make sure I don't forget it when I meet up with them, I'm sticking all of that in my car right now. Then some of the mess were toys that belong in my kids' toy area upstairs or items that belong in my office. So I'm putting all that away right now. And my office is pretty messy right now. So we're gonna do a quick tidy up in here. But before we do that, I'm going to build the new office chair that I just stole from my husband because I don't have a real office chair. I have this weird little poofy thing that's supposed to go along with my glider, but it is a more comfortable chair than that hard wooden chair in the back that I was previously sitting on and it was giving me back pain every night. So I'm excited to build this new chair and hopefully resolve my back issues. This chair was actually really easy to build and put together and I am sitting on it right now as I am voicing over this video and I can confirm it is much better than sitting on the footrest thing from my glider, which is what I was sitting on. That's what that gray little poof thing is. It's not meant to be a chair and thus it doesn't really feel like a chair. It's not comfortable at all. Don't ask me why I didn't buy myself a brand new computer chair. I. Sometimes I know that my brain doesn't think the most rationally. When I see that a computer chair is a hundred plus dollars, that just seems like an expense that I don't want to waste my money on. But then I'll like go to McDonald's and spend $20 on crap food that I definitely don't need to be eating. So yeah, I, I can't explain it. My husband must have noticed this and bought this chair for me without even asking. So thank you, husband. And shameless plug since I'm tidying this up right now, but my merch is right below this video. And this is about as clean as I'm going to get this space. I'm not showing my whole desk right now because I have some sensitive information that I don't need plastered all over the internet, but let's move on to my kids' play area. And I don't know if you remember, if you saw my Declutter Day video two weeks ago, 
I was kind of bragging in that video about how my kids have been keeping their toy space so tidy, and I definitely spoke too soon because clearly they don't give a crap about their toy area space. But I do because I'm the one walking up here in the middle of the night when they need me in the dark, stepping on things, injuring myself. So I'm just going to clean everything up. I'm bringing this plastic bin around with me and putting most of the stray toys in here just to get everything off the floor. Once I have the floor clear, I can take the bin around and organize the toys and put them in their proper bin. When my kids clean, I'm not super picky about where the toys go. I mostly just want them not on the floor so that they can't injure me late at night. But since we have come to the point where I am just doing all of this myself, I'm at least just gonna put everything in the proper bin where it belongs. And hopefully over time, my boys will start to remember where specific toys go. A few of you in the comments in the past have mentioned that putting a photo of what type of toys go in each bin on the front of the bin can be really helpful for little kids and maybe that's a project I'm going to put on my to-do list for the future. My twins are super into the tiny little Legos now, but I need to figure out a better way to properly store them. Anyone who has good suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Now that the floor is fully clear, we are going to give it a good vacuum. There's lots of little popcorn crumbs, a little Annie's bunny just got sucked up there. All over the floor, there's tiny little food crumbs. I had a no food policy up here for a while, but we play up here so often that I've kind of given up on that. And I eat food up here all the time and I can't bring up a huge bowl of popcorn and just hoard it all to myself and expect my boys to learn proper sharing. I always end up sharing with them. Messes just happen sometimes. Like, I own a vacuum for a reason. I'm fine with them eating up here now, I have decided, because I like eating up here. This vacuum picked up a lot off of this floor and now it is nice and clean and booby trap free for me and my husband if we have to come up in the middle of the night. This concludes day one of cleaning. We will now be moving to day two, but overall I'm really happy with the little bit I was able to get done today. And I am especially happy that the dining room doesn't look like a dumping grounds anymore and looks like a real dining room that's greeting when people come in. Now it's day two of cleaning and we are going to start with cleaning up the kitchen. The stove top has gotten quite grimy over time and I know I am still missing a knob on my stove top. Maybe someday I will have a proper replacement. Unfortunately, it's not just as easy as ordering a new knob off of Amazon. I actually have the knob that is supposed to go on here and it's perfectly fine. It's the little metal stick thing that you see here that is creating the problem. So I have backburnered solving this problem right now, quite literally, and we're just going to work off of four little stove cooktops right now. And I'm cleaning this today with the Pink Stuff Cream Cleanser. It's honestly, after doing it, it's not my favorite thing to clean my stove top with. Comment below, what do you like cleaning your stove top with? It works well enough, but it just takes a really long time to get all the cream cleanser off. I feel like there were multiple, multiple rounds of using my sponge and a rag to just try to get it off. So it works great in terms of getting hard stuck on things off of your stove, but then it itself becomes the hard to get off thing from your stove. Now I'm fully clearing off the countertop so I can give them a proper wipe down with my Method Granite Cleaner. 
Also, for the longest time, we wanted to avoid getting any like Siri or Google Home thing in our house. I don't even really remember what this ball thing is. I think it's an Apple Home Pod. Anyways, Siri and the government is listening to us at all times now. We tried to avoid getting one of these and we finally gave in and you know what? We like it. Consolidating my husband's water jugs into just one, I tried finding a cute one on Amazon to store our water instead of keeping it in these ugly plastic bottles, but all the cute ones are glass, and having a huge glass bottle out on our counter all the time seemed like a terrible idea, so we're just, we're just keeping it in its original container. Cleaning the kitchen feels like a never-ending task, and in the past, I would always put it off, hence why it was such a big disaster in my house at one point, and it took over three decluttering videos to get it somewhat in order, but if there is one part of the home I now think it's worth getting into shape, it is the kitchen. I saw this diagram on Callie Brantaforte's channel here, and it showed the average foot traffic in an American home most of the time is spent either in the kitchen or the family room with very little time spent in other areas. So now, if I only have 10 minutes to clean, the kitchen is the number one focus, followed by the family room. After seeing this photo also, I will never buy a larger house because there's really so much wasted space. If I ever do buy a new home, it'll be a house that actually has a real yard that my boys could go out and play in or just to be in a different area or different school district. Anyways, not sure what the point of that tangent was now, but I think it's just thinking about where you spend 90% of the time in your home and always prioritizing those spaces when you have limited time to clean. You don't have to get everything done in one run because who, who has time for that on a weekly basis anyways? Even though I just vacuumed this, it's still a filthy mess. Thankfully, it's a machine washable rug. Highly recommend machine washable rugs for your food areas if you have small children that just carelessly drop food everywhere. I'll have this one linked below. Now I'm just going to vacuum the hardwood floors. I really do need to give the floor a good mopping. I actually just ordered a new mop that I saw on TikTok. I'm actually kind of waiting for that to come in because I really want to test that out and see just how well it works on really dirty floors. So TBD on that in a future video. Now I am vacuuming out all the crumbs and old food that fall into the cracks of our little farmhouse bench seating. I really do love this table for a lot of reasons, but this is one of the things I do not like about it. I have to do this every single week. Now to cleaning, decluttering, and organizing this sad looking little bathroom. Lighting is weird in here because it's a tiny little water closet, but I want to clean out my, it's like our primary bedroom's bathroom. But I have this tiered organizer that's just become an absolute mess. Like, don't know what to do with this preparation H. I feel like the moment I get rid of this value pack that I got from Costco, I'm gonna need it. So I've held on to it for way too long. I think, think I need to just get rid of it. And then if I ever really actually need this, which I have not needed it since I've had a baby, and I had a baby for the last time like three years ago, I probably don't need this. So we'll get rid of this. All right, I got my adult diapers here. My kid's stuff has just kind of gotten jumbled into here. I feel like when we were in heavy potty training mode, like we just had supplies in every bathroom because the moment Wesley needed to go, we had to get him to a toilet to train him. But now we can get rid of all of that. I still have these maternity knit pants from back in the day after I gave birth. Again, they haven't given birth for three years, so I don't need these. I need to get more toilet paper for this. This I got a long time ago. I don't use it anymore because I like using actual toilet bowl cleaners, so this is a declutter. 
Cleaning the toilet now from top to bottom. I'm just using an antibacterial wipe to wipe the outside of the toilet and around the base. I always remove the toilet lid now. It's super easy to do and it's always surprising how disgusting and crusty it is underneath the tabs. So I wipe that down really well before reattaching the seat and cleaning the rest of the toilet. Then I blew my nose off camera and made the mistake of throwing my used Kleenex in the toilet, which after I put the toilet bowl cleaner in, I realized I can't scrub with the toilet scrubbing brush because it's just gonna get Kleenex all over it. So I flushed that. I can't put the Lysol back in the toilet bowl quite yet because the water is refilling. So I'm wiping it down again and I'm putting my Tidy Bowl automatic toilet bowl cleaner in the back of the toilet. I got it from Dollar Tree. It works pretty well for a single dollar, but I likely will not repurchase this in the future just because I feel like it uses a lot of plastic when I could be using the toilet bowl tabs in the back of the toilet instead. The water is refilled back in the toilet, so I'm putting in my Lysol toilet bowl cleaner and I'm going to let it sit for a little bit and soak while it's soaking. I want to clean the grout lines around the toilet because they're supposed to be that whitish color but around the toilet they're kind of turning brown and it's kind of getting gross and stinky in here and a little piece of me feels like Part of that is whatever stink is caught up in these grout lines. I'm gonna clean the grout lines with this. I saw it on TikTok, I tested it in my shower. It worked fine on my specific tiles and grout lines, it didn't damage them, but patch test this if you ever try it because it does and can damage certain tiles and grout. So just, you know, beware. I realized at this point that I was starting to cut it close to the time that I need to pick up my kids from preschool. So I wasn't able to clean all the grout lines in this bathroom the way I normally would, but I still wanted to at least focus on the really problematic areas as long as I was already cleaning in here. My ultimate goal anytime I clean my house is to just maximize my time and get done whatever I can in the time I have. I realize I am never going to have everything done at once and that is okay. As long as I'm making progress, it's worth it and it's a win. This little scrub mommy has, has lived a long life so I'm gonna use her to clean this up because I can use a new one after. This was easier to clean up when I did it in my shower because I could just spray it all down. In the future, when I use my toilet bowl cleaner to clean the grout lines on my bathroom floor, I'm going to use less product. I'm sure it will work just the same, especially with my electric grout scrubber, and then it will be easier and faster to wipe up off the floor because this took quite a while. The toilet bowl has had sufficient time to soak, so I'm going to clean it now. And ugh, this toilet bowl scrubber is pretty old and it I don't know what that brown stuff was. I'm assuming it's rust. I hope it was just rust. If not, that again explains why this bathroom stunk. I actually saw a really unique um, toilet scrubber brush on TikTok and I ordered it, should be getting it very soon. So I'm gonna test that one out in a future TikTok cleaning hacks video. Hopefully it's better than this rusty crusty one. Tidying up the rest of the bathroom and putting this tiered organizer behind the toilet so it's not taking up the little space in this tiny bathroom. Okay, still not perfect, and this is still a very sad looking little bathroom, but it's better than it was before. My grout is dry now, and it looks freaking phenomenal where I did my work, except for right here. Did I miss, did I not wipe that up? Well, same with that. Well, the areas that I did properly look amazing. That TikTok hack does work. You just have to actually uh, wipe up your when you're done. In fact, actually, I would say that 
looks cleaner than what I thought the white baseline was. So if I did my due diligence, which next time I will, I'm just gonna do all the grout lines in here so that they can all be sparkling white again. Gotta make some dinner and pick up my kids, but I hope this video provided a lot of decluttering and cleaning motivation for you. I got my little robo back, if you can hear him doing the last of the cleaning for me. When it comes to cleaning, I feel like I'm never completely done. At any given time, somewhere in my house is a mess, but you just do what you can, you keep up as much as you can, and at the end of the day, as long as everyone's happy and healthy, that's what matters, right? I feel like this is turning into an after school special now. I'm sorry. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna keep hanging out, feel free to click on one of the other videos that should be floating over the screen at this point, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.